I want to quickly share with you what I am looking for and how to write this critical thinking essay. And this should also help with the persuasive essay. For the critical thinking essay, you're going to answer one of these five, one of these questions below. It says five questions, but there are six. Um, and you must choose one of those questions for this essay. And then we're asking you to support your claim with specific reasons and examples. Um, this is a big issue for a short assignment, so you need to be extremely concise and detailed and avoid unnecessary words or sentences. And I want you to look at the rubric. So you're going to give me a thesis statement. You're going to give me um, an opposing view. You're going to give me support for your position, and you're going to give me a conclusion. So I thought it'd be easier to show you what I'm looking for. In this former student's essay that I'm sharing, um, they chose the topic of children and technology. Now, it's not for us to agree or disagree with this statement. That's not my position either. My position is to see that you have know how to write a thesis statement, how to give me evidence and support those evidence, how to refute an opposing argument, um, and then to conclude. So this student started off and shared a little bit of background about technology, very s simple, and then talked about smartphones can be addictive, and then wrote the thesis statement. Parents need to limit technology use and structure the time their children use it. Then here's his first support for that. Allowing children to use smartphones may cause addiction and may lead to worse behavior overall. He used his own child as an experience, um, and then talked about taking the phone away and so on. Then he gave the opposing viewpoint. Many people believe that children need to spend a lot of time with technology to learn it, and then he supports that, and then he uses an example of his own child, and then he says, children's innocence is already lost far too early. This is him refuting this argument. Access to these videos, which he talks about here, robs them of it even further. And then he goes ahead and gives one more supporting reason. Every parent wants the best for their children. Phones detract from reality. And then he writes how he sees people on with children on their phones. And they're like in Disneyland, not even experiencing Disneyland. They're on a device. And then he supports that again. May Parents need to teach their children to enjoy the moment they are in instead of wanting to live only in a virtual world. And then he went and had and concluded. And notice in the conclusion, he restates all of his beliefs that he had up, up in the essay. And then he said parents are robbing children of innocence in real life experiences. And then he says it is best to limit the amount of time children have with technology. That's his thesis statement again. Let me show you another student's. Student wrote about money and that this student's position was money can create happiness. The student had that in their title. Yet, in American essays, you have to restate the thesis. Even if you put it in your title, that doesn't matter. Um, please re-put it in the introduction. Um, this student let in about money and used an, a, a common quote and then what she frequently heard. And then she wrote, contrary to popular belief, money can create happiness. There's her thesis. Her first um, idea or support to her thesis is money is empowering and then she explains that defines that next um, main idea to support her thesis money can put people in a position to assist others then she has definitions and what people do and she has um, an example of somebody that she knows that selflessly gives then she has another um, support main idea for her support idea for her thesis. Money also makes it possible for people to prepare for and rebound for emergencies or misfortunes. And again, she has several supports here. And then finally, she goes into her opposing argument. Some people think money is the source of all evil. She uses 1 Timothy 6.10. She says the verse proves money that isn't bad, but the love of money is. And then she says that what the love of money is, the love of money begets selfishness, greed, addiction, corruption, abuse of power, and crime. Do you see how she defines the source of evil? And then she goes on and says there's 
she supports this whole thing. And yes, this is true. And let me tell you this. She goes, but here she refutes it. People who think money don't bring, who don't think money can bring happiness in the world are wrong. And then she uses a quote by Elder Dallin H. Oaks that says, that supports her um, thesis that money can be spiritually and temporally beneficial to people when it is not the object of their affection. She shares the quote, which is quite long, so she had to do special formatting. And then she said, money can create happiness because it can be a force for good. There's her thesis restated again, and then she restates her main ideas. It doesn't matter how much or little money people have, they can be happy and accomplish great things if they're wise stewards, if their hearts are in place. She even says, Heavenly Father is nothing against money. He blessed Abraham with tremendous wealth, and he can do the same for others. And that's how she concludes. She wraps it all up. Anyways, I hope this is helpful as you write this challenging um, genre of writing because we are going to do it for the critical thinking paper and for the persuasive essay. All right, good luck. Take care.